I have installed several solar systems by myself. If I can do it, you can do it. These are systems that you can afford, even if you can only afford something for small backup power. Something's better than nothing. I think this battery is going to go five or six hours. So I always wanted to know how long will one 12 volt battery run an air conditioner? Today we're going to be testing that with the Power Urus 12 volt 200 amp hour battery. We're going to be running a 5000 BTU air conditioner powered by a simple inverter. Is it going to be better than buying one of these power stations? We're about to find out. All right, we'll let it go some more and we'll come back and check in a little bit two hours later all right that was pretty amazing it just shut off at five hours and 17 minutes i want to do some more testing in the future do another video i want to hook this to a refrigerator and a deep freezer a tv and the internet so what happens if your power goes out what happens if you don't have a way to power the critical things in your house you can't let all that food go bad how can you immediately get power back to those things we're going to use a simple 12 volt battery hooked to an inverter can a single 12 volt battery help us in a situation like this we're going to test that today using a 1000 watt inverter how are we going to keep our refrigerator going what if it's a prolonged power outage and we don't have any lights will these two simple items here be able to keep our food cold and our phones charged we're about to find out we're definitely getting close to the end of the power cycle of this battery so yeah at this point we're waiting for it to shut down we'll come back here and check on it probably in about another 20 minutes okay there it is it's 4 p.m and it has finally shut down this single battery here and the inverter ran this refrigerator for 23 hours one of the best ways to reduce your electricity bill is solar but installing your own solar can seem out of your reach we're gonna be powering up this off-grid cabin with two massive power wall batteries and a 6500 watt inverter this is a very powerful kit and it's under twenty eight hundred dollars this system is able to power a small house or even be used as a backup system if the grid goes down we're going to be using the well-tested and famous LV 6548 inverter these batteries are 100 amp hours at 48 volts and they're a little over a hundred pounds we're gonna be mounting them up on the wall here in this shed. This off-grid cabin already has a previous system installed, so the first thing we need to do is remove the system that is already here. Okay, we have all the uh, communication cables hooked in here according to the directions, so let's go ahead and flip our breakers on on the batteries under here. Get both of those breakers on, then we're going to go ahead and turn on the BMS on the batteries. Okay, so there's the batteries powering up. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button on the inverter. There we go. So far, so good. Nothing has blown up or started smoking. Well, that's good. Hit the on button. We're just gonna make sure that uh, the inverter will push that microwave and the house is powered up now. I guess we can try the lights, huh? Let's see what it'll do. Oh yeah, everything's working. We're installing two brand new server rack batteries by Vature. A system like this will run this entire house. Man, these batteries are one of the cheapest on the market. So it's two o'clock in the afternoon and the batteries have already charged up to 82%. They should be close to fully charged by the end of the day. This system is large enough that it ought to be able to fully charge these batteries every single day. At the same time, it should be able to do this and run the house. If you're interested in solar for your RV, your house, or your off-grid property, these batteries are gonna be the foundation of your power supply. This is what they consider a five kilowatt hour battery. If you had two of these batteries, it would be considered 10 kilowatts. Many of you know, if you've already seen some of my previous videos, that I installed two of these Vatcher batteries in my off-grid system. So 10 kilowatts of these batteries are in my system now, and we're going to up upgrade it to 20 kilowatt. The maximum output of these batteries is around 100 amps each. You're probably not ever gonna pull that much power from it, but it's good to have everything rated correctly. So we're basically gonna be taking all of the positives from the battery and running them to the positive side on the bus bar. And then we're gonna take all the negatives here off the battery and run them to the negative sides of the bus bar. Using these bus bars is going to guarantee that we get an even distribution of power in between the batteries. Here we go. We're firing everything up. So far, so good. Waiting for the power to kick on to the house. I haven't seen the voltage come out to the house yet. There it goes. 120 volt, 120 volt. We're gonna turn on the solar panels down here. There's one and there's two. That's 700 watts there, 500 watts, 600, 700 there, 1,000 there, 1,000 there, 
So yeah, we're still pushing a couple thousand watts. The sun is way over there behind the trees. You know, we're pretty much done for the day as far as charging, but it's such a large array that we're getting in tons of power still, even at the end of the day. We're gonna take you step by step, wire by wire through the installation process. We're gonna be installing 400 watts of solar panels. On this system, we're gonna be wiring these panels in parallel. One of the best ways to reduce your electricity bill is solar, but not everybody can afford solar. Not everybody has the knowledge to install solar. Okay, our system is officially wired in. I think in the future I may cut some of these wires a little shorter. I'd like to arrange these wires where they just come from here to here, or here to here, or maybe even run to a bus bar right here. But for now, we have all the negatives on the negative, and we have all the positives on the positive. On this system, we're gonna be wiring these panels in parallel. That means from each panel, the positive is going to go to the positive to the next panel, and the negative is going to go to the negative to the next panel, and so on and so on, until we come out at the end with a positive and a negative. 25. So that's a 25 degree angle that we have the panels at now. We're gonna move this up to 30. That, my friends, is 30.5. So that's pretty much right on the money. We're gonna go ahead and put a load on this system and see what kind of power it'll push. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is make sure it'll run my chop saw. All right, obviously no problem there. So let's check out our air compressor. All right, we'll go ahead and plug our compressor in here. We'll turn this compressor on and make sure it's going to work. All right, all that worked flawless. I'm pretty happy with that. This is Jack. He's been living off the grid now for nine years. This is his solar array. It's also been off the grid for nine years. <laughs> it's definitely seen better days. Today we're gonna be upgrading Jack's solar battery bank with four 12 volt lithium batteries. We will be wiring them into a 48 volt configuration. We're gonna go ahead and remove the current battery bank out of the shed and go ahead and wire in these Redato batteries. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is shut down the solar power coming in, and then we're going to turn off the inverter. Now that everything is shut down, we're gonna go ahead and start removing the old batteries. corner we chose these self-heated batteries by Rodato. Okay there it is the Rodato batteries are completely wired into the system so now it's time to turn the system back on and see how it works. Okay we got the charge controller programmed here it's showing us that uh, we're just bringing in a light little load of 460 watts. Just like that, you got a thousand watts more. How about that, about 1220 watts now. 